Thank you. So I honored to be here today and let me share my experience. Uh, and first, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, good, good, good. It's afternoon, at least. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Julie, um, Dr. Gerlo, and good afternoon, Dr. Tamerman. I'm, I'm glad to see you again. You know. Um, so let's start. Is my presentation. You know, colleagues, uh, so uh, first I want to describe you like briefly, how does our healthcare system uh, work in Ukraine? So you understand our uh, context, you know, as of right now, uh, we have a single pair system uh, in Ukraine move to universal health uh, coverage and established medical uh, program of medical guarantees. Uh, we uh, like take uh, money from our state budget and uh, reallocate it uh, to the National Health Service of Ukraine, it's single payer system, and National Health Service of Ukraine uh, pays um, uh, for uh, medical uh, services, medical procedures to contracted hospitals. So, um, like we take, we don't have some uh, medical um, specialized medical tax. Uh, we don't, um, we don't have a lot of people uh, provided with private um, uh, health care insurance. So, majority of patients in Ukraine. Uh, they um, are getting treatment, they treatment paid through uh, state budget, you know, and uh, you can see that uh, our state budget um, uh, for healthcare is uh, next year, it's like 159 billion of greenness or 4.3 billion of uh, US dollars. Uh, of course, it's like uh, we didn't drop uh, our uh, budget uh, compared to previous uh, and 2022. But uh, of course, you know, devaluation, inflation, that's, uh, uh, we are still trying to keep it the same, but a war influence budget. The the, the 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 first thing so uh for general context uh look at our cases and this is a number uh of course a uh, number of uh, new uh diagnosed cancer cases annually in ukraine uh before the war we uh, we used to have uh, 136 thousand approximately yearly in new uh, cancer can uh, cases uh, in ukraine um almost 1000 uh, pediatric cancer cases uh, uh cases uh, 77000 death and you can see our mortality uh, and uh, overall like uh, according to our uh, uh, statistic data we, uh, we 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 have had uh, one million uh, cancer patient in Ukraine and you can see the distribution top um, five cancer uh, by disability adjusted life years I I presume it's similar for uh, many countries it's like lung cancer colorectal cancer gastric breast and uh, pancreatic um, so uh, that's the situation we had uh, I mean uh, before the war. So, um, you know, also uh, we um, have had uh, 115 uh, healthcare facilities uh, contracted by National Health Service of Ukraine for providing uh, for providing uh, medical services like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and oncohematologist treatment uh, within the program of medical guarantees. I mean, we did that pro program that was established uh, and uh, for, I mean, um, in terms of universal health coverage for all Ukrainian citizens. And um, unfortunately, like the war, the war happened, you know, war happens and it happened also in Ukraine and we were attacked and a lot of healthcare facilities uh, were also attacked. You can see uh, numbers uh, like 106 uh, healthcare workers were uh, killed and then and, 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 uh, 1,400 healthcare facilities, different, different health, healthcare facilities in different cities, small and big cities um, uh, are damaged and, and, and then 170 cents fully destroyed. So anticipating, uh, of course, uh, those challenges that we've seen in March, we approached to uh, to uh, to European Commission. We approached to WHO office and requested support in um, treatment. You know, uh, we uh, you can see what happened at first days. So um, why we approached, why we uh, why we requested their support because like at the beginning. Uh, people started migrate from uh, southern, from eastern, and from uh, northern part of Ukraine. 
uh, to central and western part. Uh, you can see here it's interesting dynamics. This is the dynamics of payments of registered uh, cases of provided treatment. Um, we, we, we got those data from National Health Service of Ukraine. You see that patients, like it's chemotherapy uh, cases in, in March, you can see that line. So how, 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 how the trend dropped drastically in March, because people from Kyiv, you know, uh, Russians uh, tried to capture Kyiv um, at the beginning of the war. And, and a lot of people, they moved, they moved to Lviv city, they moved to uh, the central part of Ukraine and uh, to other Western central uh, cities. So you can see that there is increase of uh, cases in Lviv and um, decrease in, 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 in Kyiv, for instance. And the situation stayed the same in, in Lutsk, Lutsk city, for instance, because this city was popular maybe uh, for, 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 for patients it's located near the border with Belarus, so people didn't want to uh, to be evacuated there. It, that was also dangerous. And here you can you can see the same thing almost with, with uh, radiotherapy cases. I mean, that showed that people, we got a migration of patients. So that was the reason, uh, and, 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 and like wh wh why we requested um, support from European countries. You can see almost like um, all types of treatment uh, in Ukraine, um, you, the hospitals stopped. That was not just situation in some cities, in some, in, 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 in some um, regions, uh, you know, that was the like um, um, overall Ukraine, we've got problems with treatment, you know, air alarms, uh, migration of doctors, because a lot of doctors also moved from their cities uh, moved abroad, moved, moved, moved to western part of Ukraine, and we've seen that like uh, we were not able uh, to provide all the patients. We were not able. Uh, hospitals were not able uh, continuing operating uh, during um, um, you know uh, during air alarms and 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 and, 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 and uh, offensive actions, etc. So that's why like you you, you can see that uh, there is. In, in March, in April, um, like um, patients, uh, our Ukrainian cancer patients met a lot of challenges because um, some of them immigrated and some of them met uh, met 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 that uh, closed hospitals, departments, units, or or even um, units without doctors. So they were forced also move to western parts or abroad. That's why we requested evacuation support from our. From our European partners, and you can see, like I, I wanted to dem demonstrate to you, how patients moved from like um, Kharkiv city to 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 Lviv city, like Kharkiv oblast to Lviv oblast. You you see before the war, like January and February, number of treated, um, num num number of treated cases, uh, and uh, chemotherapy uh, cases, and then you can see what happened after, um, I mean, uh, the war started. The same thing with uh, with uh, radiotherapy in, in other regions, so like Kherson region, you know, it's like thousand part of Ukraine was occupied also, and, and then people moved to the central part, the Vinitsa oblast, Vinitsa city. So what we've done, uh, we requested support from European countries or European partners, and we also established our Ukrainian legislation. Uh, we allowed patients to be evacuated, like we wanted somehow to control that, uh, to prioritize. Uh, uh, to prioritize the, uh, patients, I mean, diseases that should be evacuated um, from Ukraine, that we should support, that we should organize, uh, establish some special algorithms, mechanisms. Of course, a lot of people, they moved uh, to European countries by themselves. They didn't need our support. But some of them, uh, some vulnerable categories of patients, uh, um, they, they needed our support. That's why we established this criteria. Um, you know, ministerial, uh, we established uh, evocation criteria um, um, for by established by ministerial decree. And also we established special procedure for military patients because um, during the war military patients, they were not allowed to cross the border. So we established like procedure uh, for, uh, for, 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 for military patients, uh, allowing them uh, to go uh, abroad uh, for treatment, and you can see that what what where uh, are it's still it's it's still active. Our criteria for vacation referral criteria for being referred for treatment to European countries. It's like trauma burns. Of course, it's uh, the things caused by war. Um, uh, 
uh, literally, it's childhood cancer and adult cancer and rare diseases. Why childhood, adult, and rare diseases? Because like we're restricted access of patients to uh, to medicines, restricted access of patients uh, for, for 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 patients to um, uh, to radiotherapy and plant surgeries, etc. At least at the beginning of the work. So here you can see in detail, so what type of um, um, conditions we recommended doctors uh, to um, refer for treatment abroad. And of course, we wanted to, um, you know, to avoid the situation when we evacuate a patient in palliative condition, because it's not reasonable transporting the European countries, patients in, uh, uh, I mean, palliative conditions, and it's better staying in Ukraine with their families, I mean, um, 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 and, 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 um, uh, spending the last day of their lives uh, within families uh, on a homeland. Uh, the, so uh, th that, that's we we put a uh, performance status into our criteria and any criteria quite broad, almost they, they are quite abstract. Of course, it's impossible to describe each condition in our situation, each type of cancer. And um, so that's why um, on, at least on on, on legislational level. That's why we, we established this criteria. They, 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 they are quite broad. So, I mean, a lot of patients could have requested support, could have been evacuated to European countries. And we started to, uh, we established that algorithm started to, we, we started to collect in data from, from hospital. Like um, we established uh, a Google form for patients. Uh, we, uh, we appointed like coordinators in each region and you can see, and also we engaged NGO because the, 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 the greatest supporter of, of, of patient, uh, cancer patients are um, uh, pather, pa 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 cancer patients, uh, non-governmental organization, at least in Ukraine. So through the different channels, a patient uh, got opportunity to, to send, to, 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 to request medevac. Uh, and then like uh, we were identifying patients, we got uh, coordinators, both coordinators, different volunteers, and then we got contracted uh, coordinators because we received some support from WHO, from European Commission. They were calling to patients, um, clarifying situations, uh, clarifying their um, medical um, data, and and then and, and, and talking to their doctors and discussing the, like possibility of evacuation, giving the patients some uh, some um, recommendations. And you know when we were, I mean, uh, after collecting all that necessary information about patients, we were preparing evacuation tables, so called, and sharing that evacuation table with our European colleagues, like requesting. Uh, requesting their support. The, our European co colleagues, Emergency Response Coordination Center, it's uh, institution of the uh, European Commission responsible responsible for um, civil protection mechanism. You know, so they um, they are they were activating civil protection um, mechanism for Ukrainian citizens. You know, uh, that um, uh, directive on temporal protection was activated for Ukrainians in March 2022. So I mean, all Ukrainian citizens. Uh, can get the necessary medical treatment, social support, including medical treatment in European countries, according to this, that temporary protection directive. And it is still uh, active. It's active, uh, was reacti reactivated last man month until uh, March 2025. So within that temporary protection, um, European countries were proposing our patients uh, uh, you know, treatment. And then, then, then we organized logistic and transported patients, um, the, the technical things to, to European countries. So I want to show you how many offers uh, we received. And you remember, uh, my, maybe like on the third slide, where I mentioned that we, before the war, had 136,000 uh, newly diagnosed cancer cases annually. And, and in, 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 in these numbers, like we vacated to our like greatest partner on evacuations on, of cancer patients on Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Germany, of course, Sweden, Italy. Uh, and uh, it's it's interesting uh, uh, compared to newly diagnosed cases, these uh, I mean numbers quite small, of course, you understand it's it's less than 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 one percent of all um, Ukrainian patients who got cancer 
during like 2022, 2023. So um, here are uh, distribution, I mean, um, according to diagnosis, and you can see that majority of patients evacuated, this is number of patients already evacuated to, uh, to European countries. And you can see the leading like calls for medical evacuation abroad um, is uh, malignant melanoma and um, breast cancer and also, um, and also uh, lung cancer. So why that? Uh, because um, you remember uh, at the beginning I described uh, uh, the restrictions of access uh, to uh, chemotherapy, to plants, uh, to radiotherapy and, 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 and plant surgeries. That was the logic establishing this program, Medevac program, uh, requesting uh, requesting support from European countries for all those uh, patients who uh, who lost uh, um, access to, to like in basic procedures like chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But uh, then you know uh, people that this program became popular, and uh, I mean um, Ukraine, uh, like Russians withdraw their uh, army from 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 Kiev, Chernihiv from. Uh, northern part of Ukraine, and like uh, hospital renewed, renewed their usual, um, uh, I mean, um, schedule of work, and they started provide patients with the necessary uh, surgeries, with radiotherapy, uh, a logistic of uh, medicines was relocked because at the beginning we couldn't distribute medicines. You imagine you have a, a, a big store of uh, cancer medicines located near Kiev uh, and you can't move that store because like um, that, that zone of warfare and like uh, we, we, a lot of patients were waiting uh, for medicines procured by government. I mean, free, free of charge medicine procured by government were locked in some storages. So, I mean, we renewed all the things. A majority of hospitals renewed their work, almost all hospitals in all the occupied territories. Of course, we don't know what is going on in occupied territories you know, with cancer centers, but, but all cancer centers uh, on uh, deoccupied and free territories, they are active now and working like as usual. So, I mean, that's why our program moved from, um, you know, uh, from requesting uh, by just essential basic procedures uh, to uh, to requesting, I'll show you now, um, just expensive drugs. You know, uh, here you can see distribution of uh, cases, um, I mean, um, by request for Medivac. Uh, and 82% 80, um, request for medical education uh, of, of cancer patients abroad. Uh, it's like drug treatment. It's not surgery. It's not even bone marrow transplant. You know, it's definitely not radiotherapy. It's a, 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 it's expensive medicines. You can see that pembrolism up takes the the, the third like uh, thirty percent of all cases. It's 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 just. Uh, um, pembrolizumab, it's get through the uh, melanoma patient, adenocarcinoma, or lung adenocarcinoma patients. They 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 need those drugs, and um, let me be honest, patients patients um, have seen that opportunity receiving free of charge treatment in European Union European countries within temporary protection. So they started um, like just um, you know emigrate to European countries and also move to European countries through our Medivac system. So and that caused a lot of challenges for us because you know uh, program became popular. A lot of patients uh, still uh, still uh, wants to be evacuated and request evacuation. But European countries um, they of course accept our patients but Medivac procedure that procedure was established not for uh, such a cases with that when ambulatory patients with good performance status um, can can go by themselves to European Union, activate temporary protection, and get uh, the necessary treatment. Because uh, maybe you remember our criteria established for medical vacation. The first and 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 and, and second uh, criteria. Uh, and that on that list uh, are uh, trauma and and, and uh, burn and burns 
because like uh, those patients wounded uh, by missiles, you know, by, um, I don't know, um, bullets, etc. Um, I mean, because of the war, they really need medical assistance. They need specialized medical transportation. They need specialized charter flight, like a uh, Norwegian plane that transport patients each week from Poland to different European countries. That That's what medical evacuation program was established for. And uh, in case of chronic diseases, it moved from some, um, some, some, some basic needs that we wanted to cover at the beginning of the war. It moved to getting expensive, unavailable in Ukraine treatment. And this treatment was unavailable before the war, even like, because, you know, we, I, I've seen you maybe, maybe you can, you can, uh, uh remember our budget uh honestly we are low middle income country and we can't afford ourselves to buy to procure all medicines you know all the way available on market on the market um medicines as of right now so of course before the war during the war and even i mean some years after the war we'll we'll not be able to cover all the necessity uh, of uh, expensive medicines and and then that's challenging, but um, and and and, and, and this right now, we're dealing uh, with we we with that challenge, uh, um, a lot of requests and and um, like absence of offers from our European partners, uh, because it's um, I mean uh, they also understand this situation and they want to evacuate through Medivac system more. Uh, wounded patients. I mean, for third juries patients with trauma, burns, and and like we evacuate every week those patients to European countries that still have those challenges with expensive drugs that we had before the war, and uh, and, and, and 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 we are trying to like uh, improve our healthcare system despite the war. We using new um, tools uh, to procure new medicines like managed entry, managed entry agreements, you know, when you uh, establish a negotiation group and, 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 and procure um, and, and have uh, like organized some negotiation with uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, to buy innovative uh, original drugs that um, are not available on the Ukrainian market. And um, th so, so this is going on, and and you know uh, our like uh, war restricted an access. Then our army like um, gave uh, that access back thanks to our army. Of course, patients received uh, the access to to basic uh, uh, treatment options, basic I mean treatment options of cancer and uh, like uh, all that program. Still, uh, I mean, moved to uh, to getting uh, expensive expensive uh, cancer medicines, as like is demonstrated on this slide.